There's no really pretty exit. I mean, when you look at burial or flame-based cremation or alkaline hydrolysis, there's really no pretty way to go. Why the public hasn't really embraced it, I don't see it, but I believe alkaline hydrolysis will be the wave of the future. My name's Terry Renier. I'm the Director of Anatomical Services at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Alkaline hydrolysis goes by multiple different terms. Resumation, biocremation, aquamation. Ultimately, it's a, a process by alkaline hydrolysis. Well, welcome to our alkaline hydrolysis unit. A donor that we uh, biocremated, so we decided to leave the remains in here so that you could view what it looks like uh, after a typical cycle. As you can see, um, it looks real angelic. Uh, it looks very pure and clean. We put the individuals in a porous basket inside the machine. Uh, we have a prescribed amount of water that's added, and uh, the alkaline, we use potassium hydroxide. So we heat it up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and the water is circulated for the remains. And through the process, uh, it dissolves the soft tissue. And then what remains in the, in the basket uh, is somewhat similar to what remains in the uh, retard for flame-based cremation is the bone. So as you can see, the bones are it's very white. We have, uh, well, here's, here's a part of a rib right here. It's just, just too light. Uh, you'll never see this in a flame-based crematory. An example of your, your humerus, uh, your upper arm bone, the jaw, scapula, or your shoulder blade. Back there were some really w unusual articles that were going around. Uh, I think it was the impression that all the whole body goes down the drain, similar to what the mob would do. They were trying to make their crime go away or the, the body disappear. Um, the whole body doesn't disappear. I think if people understand it a little bit more, they wouldn't be so confused and might embrace change a little bit more positively. There's a lot of challenges for earth burial. Our communities are so transient. There's an opinion that we're running out of burial space. Are we burying time bombs as far as uh, embalming fluid, uh, chemotherapeutic agents. As far as the flame-based cremation, uh, you know, the biggest uh, problem with that is the air pollution, the amount of carbon that it emits. But there's a lot of pollutants that do uh, exit the smokestack. When you get into the world of uh, water uh, reclamation or water pollution, and the amount of fluid that we discharge is relatively small and is easily treatable. Well, we use a, a, probably about one twelfth the amount of energy that uh, a traditional crematory does for each individual cycle. Lighting up a football stadium would, would be the flame-based version, and uh, you know, lighting up our office would be the comparison for alkaline hydrolysis amount of energy that's consumed. Anything that's not a protein would be uh, recovered during the process. Certainly some of the uh, titanium and stainless steel uh, artificial joints would be recovered. This is an example of an artificial breast that was recovered, an artificial testicle that was recovered. Flame cremation, certainly none of the plastic, the Teflons, would definitely not be in the vessel after the flame-based cremation. I think there's some hope there for reimplantation. These joints could be recovered from the alkaline hydrolysis process. They look just as shiny as the day they went in. And I think with perhaps resurfacing or refinishing, they could be reused for uh, future users at a minimal expense for the next generation of healthcare. Uh, healthcare is a big topic these days and the expense of it. And anything we can do to contribute to holding those costs down, I think uh, would add to the, to the benefit of this technology. Alkaline hydrolysis is a game changer. It's certainly gonna change traditions or final disposition. It's a lot more greener process. Uh, the uh, carbon footprint is much smaller. Uh, I think uh, you look at communities like Los Angeles or Tokyo or, or some of these densely populated areas where they're already struggling with air pollution. This is a way to help and make a change in that uh, a positive change.